Hello and welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Todd. Before we get into this episode, I'm going to plug a couple of things pretty quick. Number one is Patreon. Patreon.com slash Tea With Me podcast. We'll do a bonus episode on a Monday, live stream on a Friday. I've been putting up some gig clips as well. We will continue to do that. I'm going to put a Rathlin video up. I'm going to put a Todd's Leap video up as well where we did uh, clay pigeon shooting, and then William, uh, here's the sale for that video, William Thompson, who has cerebral palsy, jumped off a big thing onto like a foam, uh, like landing pad, so if you want to see that, patreon.com slash tea with me podcast, and again, if you want to see more people with debilitating conditions do stunts, patreon.com slash tea with me podcast, we got you covered, uh, also, we got sponsors, we got sponsors, none more so than Thompson's Tea, What is the number one selling tea in Northern Ireland? Is it Tetley? No. We hate those guys, with those cartoon guys with their white coats on, the brown flat caps and glasses. The nerds of tea, the Tetley guys. Is it, you know, what are some of the other ones? Uh, PG Tips, absolutely not. It's Punjana. And you're probably going, where is Punjana? Because Punjana sounds exotic. Where is it from? They've been making tea in Belfast since the 1800s. The Thompson family make Punjana tea. They make it by hand and they drink it by mouth. And they travel around the world bringing you the best tea. They go to places like India. They go down where else do they go? Go to places like Pakistan. Pakistan on tea business. They come back with all those leaves and then they taste it. And they say either thumbs up or thumbs down. So I was going to say you know every tea has been tasted by the Thompson. Like not the one you're getting, but they taste the batch and then they sign off on it. Punjana is Northern Ireland's number one selling tea. We drink it here. We drink we drink it, you love it. And again, that's not one of their slogans, but you know, theoretically it could be. Punjana. You love it, we make it. <laughs> I don't make it. We don't make it here. They made Thompson's family make it. Our second sponsor, of course, is Manscaped. I've been thinking about balls a lot recently. Hmm. <laughs> and Manscaped have two. That's their job. You know, because balls don't get, balls don't really get a look in, you know, in conversation and all that kind of thing. It's all dick. But the balls are always just there, you know, in the background doing a, doing a really good job. And Manscaped are the number one company for below the belt grooming. It's 2021, we're out of lockdown, we need to just, you know, everyone's doing stuff like, oh, they're, they're doing up the garden. You know, they're, they're building a bar in the, in the back garden. You need to translate that into your pubic region. Landscape it, manscape it. That's br- that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Dan, isolate that and send that to them specifically. Landscape your garden, manscape your <laughs> deck and balls. You know, they've got the lawnmower 3.0. It's up behind me there. It's got a wee light on it. It's an electric razor, anti snag technology, so you don't snag your balls. That's what it is anti snag technology. Dan uses it. I use it. Mike uses it. Mike uses it on Dan. Dan uses it on me. That's that's what we do before every podcast. Manscaped.com. Use the code T with me for twenty percent off and free shipping. If you're also in the balls game, Manscaped.com. Use the code T with me twenty percent off and free shipping. That's the sponsor reads done. Now we get on get on to the main business. I've got a guest. I've got a guest. He is a friend of mine and a friend of yours. He is Lurgan's finest son. Mickey Bartlett. We talked about this before. Have I ever said, who else? <laughs> you can't do all of that ball stuff <laughs> and then be like, Lurgan's finest son, Mickey Bartlett. Lurgan's <laughs> finest, Mickey Bartlett. Um, have I asked this before? I said Lurgan's finest. Who else is famous from Lurgan? Collie Duffy and Lennon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the trifecta. <laughs> you guys, I think. All, all killers in their own way. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. I think it's fair to say you guys are coming together for a new stage show, yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah, it's called Getting Off in Different Ways. Uh, me, Belfast. Sexually, Duffy, Good Friday, and Neil Lennon. People Sacked by Celtic, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, I like a shirt, we're both and wearing, is that, is that linen? It is a linen cotton? shirt, yeah, so we linen? sort of linen mix, like we cotton blend. Um, this is one of these situations where I was shopping with my girlfriend, and I went, you want to think of that shirt? And she was like, babe, that's great, that's really nice, that's really nice. And then she was like, do you want to try it on? And I went, nah, it'd be grand. Yeah. And I put it on this morning and I've realized that I thought it was going to make me look like some sort of 
you know, kind of like a relaxed James Bond casual yeah. sort of linen thing going on. Well, if you had... I look ma- like I should have a cane with a mosquito on the top of it. That's what I was going to say. If you were like, if you had the matching trousers, you'd look like you own land in India and like yeah, the... Yeah. I look like, yeah, I I, I'd be whipping was. people for the tea that you're... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I look, like, I look like I call everybody boy. Yeah. <laughs> My boy, boy. Yeah, come over here and shave me with your manscape, boy. What? <laughs> If I just lost your sponsors, I'm really sorry with that. No, I'm, just, right. I'm just jealous of having it. It's all right. <laughs> where do you go? Where do you retail? Rushmere? Will you walk about the Rushmere and I'll drop just, some money? Uh, I'll, I'll just, yeah, usually. Do you if, ever get uh, a shop closed, closed for you? Quite we, often. Could you uh, ring Debenhams, up? Debenhams, actually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is that why they're closed? Yeah, them and Top Man. Yeah, yeah. Because I was sick of that whole muscle fit thing they were doing, so I wanted to shut it down. Honestly, one of my favourite bits from stand-ups ever that we would have gone out and seen was your bit back in the day, which could still 100% work now, about going into a shop and someone thinks you work there and then you proceed to just I start answer working. questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a brilliant, brilliant bit. That That's not even... That's only about 50% made up. Yeah. Like, half of that did happen. I was in I was in a top man in Craig Avon and this girl just, like... I don't even know why she thought I worked there because I'm too fat to work in top man and always have been. But it must have been, like, I had a pair of Dun- Dunlop green flashes on, so she must have been like, oh, he must work here. <laughs> and she was like, do you know where the jeans are? And I went, yeah. And then she, I just saw her coming back with, like, another question. And I was like, I need to get the fuck out of here quick. And I just hid in the change room until she left. Did you, um, do you remember, like, back in the day when someone thought you worked somewhere and then you both thought it was the funniest thing ever? Yeah. Do you work here? I don't know. No. And then you both, like, <laughs> yeah. fucking died laughing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I used to, you know, say he's about too fat for top man. I, when Hollister opened in Belfast, oh, I was, I was too for, fat for there also. Well, so was I. I was looking for, I was too ugly for Hollister. Man, that's a disgrace. I know. you're a, 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 a I'm a seven. Devil, like. I'm a seven, but a comedy ten. Nah, mate, you're, yeah. Because, yeah, with comedy, I'm about a six. Yeah, no, you know no, I mean? you're you're a comedy eight. A comedy eight? Yeah, yeah, Appreciate yeah. Appreciate that one, thanks very much. Uh, but Hollister <laughs> opened up in Belfast, like an American... California surf company and I was like well look I'm looking for a job that might be good someone sent me the link to apply and then I applied and they have like tiers of how good looking you are so the first one is like front of house you stand at the doorway remember you stand people and this would work in California you'd walk in and the people had to say what's up dude welcome to the pier yeah you had to say that as your job to everybody who walked in what's up dude welcome to the pier but like People had to say that in the Belfast shop. Aye. From Belfast. Welcome to fucking beer. All right, bro. All right, mate. You looking a wee tap? <laughs> All I, right, dude. Gnarly. Come on in. Surf's up, bro. <laughs> I'm going to burn your surfboard in the 12th. Cowabunga, you fucking <laughs> bastard. Come uh, on in. Cowabunga, that's my cousin. I'm fucking hard doing. Cowabunga, Haggerty. Fuck, I <laughs> Loves his gear, mate. Loves his gear. <laughs> Could have played for Arsenal too, and he broke a man at Arsenal, but fuck it, make them in. Jason Bus. <laughs> Not for trams, like, no, he just, no, he just likes driving a bit. <laughs> <laughs> See, he drives a bus, he sits on a dinner plate, going zzz, like out there, but he's not, he's not, he's not fucking alright. No, I mean, God love him. <laughs> Great there. So they're the number one best looking people? Yeah. But didn't Hollister have a thing where it got slightly darker as you went? So, like, their the shop got ugly dark. ones were at the back. Yeah. And you couldn't really see them. It was smoke and mirrors, like, the, the whole shop. So, you had the best-looking people out the front. Second best-looking people were on, like, the tills. Yeah. You know, they serve you and stuff. Third best-looking people going around, restocking, making the place sit nice. Yeah. I apply. And then, by the way, then the worst kind is overnight. And what that means is you get brought in under the cover of darkness. <laughs> With, with a cloak on your face, you know what I mean? They hide you and they bring you in. Right. And, like, and they, then they unleash you and you just run about <laughs> folding clothes, being like, there you go, master. <laughs> yeah, can, can you hey, Lord? <laughs> yes, master. I do that for you now, sir. Please don't kick us again. We love it. <laughs> for all the surf shorts, is it, master? <laughs> you know, so you had to go and do that. <laughs> now, <laughs> we, welcome to the don't. <laughs> I just want to say welcome to the pier once, master. Here's how ugly I am. I didn't get the overnight job, but then they phoned me after someone couldn't take it and went, we had you on the waiting list. Do you want to come and do that? So I was that tier. Shit. Level five, good looking for Hollister. And it was, uh, it was fucking terrible. And there's two things I always think about, because I worked in retail for years, like, but 
the worst thing I think I'd ever heard was a mate of mine. We were still at uni and she started working in Starbucks in Derry when it just opened. And they had to say, every single customer when it first opened, they had to say, thanks a latte. <laughs> every fucking single time. That and my mum, right, she retired. She retired when she was about 53 or 54. Worked in the civil service, got like fucking leave. Right. Um, and she went looking for a job. And she, they, they were opening an Asda, I think, in Portadown. And she was like, I'll just go and maybe get a wee part-time job in Asda. Just to keep it something to do. Yeah. But Asda do like a personality test. To see where you're best suited, like in the store. So, right. you know, like same thing, like if you're going to be a sales assistant or If you're bubbly pills, and stuff, yeah, all sorts of pills. Stuff. And yeah, and they had my mad did a personality test and they basically told her she was suitable to drive a van on her own. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, not like away from our, yeah, yeah, not, not, not do deliveries. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just literally drive her, there's a van, just drive around. Do you ever work in a supermarket, like a big one? I worked in Dunn's for a bit. Um, I'm so shit at jobs like that. Yeah, man. I'm I, brutal. I it, like, yeah. And like, in Hollister, we had the like, here's this mental. They don't hang any clothes. It's They're all to be folded. Right. Like stacks. So I would come in overnight, but I never, like I was so bad at it. And then even when I worked in shops, I never, I would never give someone the right change. I Ever, like. Well, I was terrible, like, because I, I worked in, I worked in a lot of clothes retail, so I worked in Next. I worked in Dunn's, like in a clothes one, and then a supermarket Dunn's as well. Uh, so Duns were like, well, you I, got a- I, I pretty much got sacked from a Duns in Craigavon <laughs> and then applied for the Duns in Portadown <laughs> as a joke. Because I was like, they're bound to ring. It's only five minutes. They're bound to go, here, what about this guy? Nah. Yeah. And they gave me the job and I didn't even really want it. Right. Um, but just to, just to spite Duns. Yeah. But then I remember like being mind blown that conveyor belts on checkouts aren't automatic. There's a wee pedal. What? I don't know. You, you do that, you go, boo, like how it moves and then you can stop it when you want. Did you know this? No, this Dynamite? is back in 2004. Times have changed. I don't know if that's... They're probably doing that just with your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so you, you, so you would do... Right, so that's... Fuck, that makes a lot of sense because yeah. I never... I never knew how it was done and I presumed I would never find out. It was the kind of know? thing... Like, I remember like really panicking about that. Like, how, how do you move the... Because I started being like, if that thing moves moves faster than I can put yeah, stuff yeah, in the yeah. bag, this is going Backlog, to be a fucking nightmare. Yeah. But it's not just you do it with your foot. And then my motor skills were so bad that I would like just keep moving it with my foot and fuck it up anyway. I hated it. I used to like, I'd finish school, get a bus, not even a school bus, like get a bus in my uniform out to port it down, which took like half an hour, get changed and then just go to work. And I remember one time be, like just being fucking starving because you're only working like a four hour shift. You didn't get a break. Uh, and I was so hungry. I tried to eat a bag of peanuts like just by holding it. Like, I, I could feel a bag of peanuts. What do you mean? You tried started. to, like, ingest it through your hands? Yeah, I was like, I wonder, can I just, like, put enough pressure in this that I'll get some nutrients because I'm fucking starving. Into your skin? You thought yeah. of you... And I was 16. I wasn't very smart. Wasn't, yeah, wasn't yeah, very... Yeah. Uh, we'd yeah. just done, like, osmosis and... Uh, <laughs> sorry, mimosas when we were drunk. <laughs> I just see you in Subway after this. <laughs> Working Subway as well. That was another one. Yeah. What? Remember what you did in Subway? No. The dirty thing? Yeah. You told, you've told it on stage. Yeah, I've told it a few times. Can you tell it? Yeah, like that's, never, just... The that's re- 10 out... That's the thing people... The thing people worry about is, oh, do they mess with your food and stuff? Yeah. You do? Yeah. If you're a complete dick, yeah. somebody's going to... Because it's minimum wage. You do, I don't work for Subway. I work in Subway. You're not doing it for the passion of uh, like culinary yeah. excellence. Call me a sandwich artist all you want. Yeah. I don't believe you. Right? Yeah. This isn't art. But yeah, we used to do a thing where... And it was pretty rank. Um... And it was always like the same two or three customers. Right. Because you you would basically, you would figure it after a while. After you worked there for a couple of weeks, you'd be like, oh, this guy comes in Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Um, and there was like always a guy who would come in and he would stand in the queue all day. Like, not all day, just like all at lunchtime. Get to the counter and then go, mm. Yeah. Mm. And then he would order mm. a plain turkey sandwich with ketchup. What delight shall I sample? Yeah. Mm. And he would just order something. There isn't even a picture of it. Yeah, yeah. Just, and we used to do things so when customers are really rude, what we would do is the wee cardboard trays where you put like the chicken and stuff in, we would all just like spit on it uh, and leave it under the desk so that when somebody was a dick, when you were looking for your wee knife, you would just rub your finger in the, in the spit and then purse their salad down with it. Um, I made another one as well where he would, when he was toasting their sandwich, he would just scratch his armpit for ages and then use that hand to put their salad. That's bad. That's, like, that's bad. Like, yeah. That's bad but business. I remember, like, I remember having a mate who worked at a McDonald's and he was like, if this is before like, do you know, like not McDonald's now? You can go to can I get a cheeseburger with no onions and they have them ready. Right. Whereas before they didn't, he was like they never have those fucking. You things make ready. it fresh. Yeah, but he was like, that's when people are going to spit in your food if you make them 
make you a fresh burger. So just don't mess with people who are like making you food. Don't, it's just, just don't do it. It's not worth it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like genuinely see people that do like the job of like barista or McDonald's or something like that. I have so much respect because I couldn't do. See when you go oh, into, see when you go into like Nero and you're like, could I get two black americanos and a latte, or whatever? And they're doing that thing. Yeah, they're putting the thing into the thing, okay. and then and then all I, the things, yeah. and then two wee shots. I'm like, how are you spinning all those plates? Yeah. How are you doing that? I get like, when a barman makes a fucking cocktail, gives gives it that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, how do you even know what's in that? I was a waiter. There's no way anybody else has asked for an old fashioned the same yeah. thing. Like, I was a waiter for one shift. And the reason I got sacked is because I could only do plates one at a time. Aye. So I'd walk the full length of the restaurant with one, like a table of 12 people. Your boy's doing 24 trips Aye. back and forth. And that's you. Yeah. And then the chefs used to fuck with me and tell me like there were different ice cream specials on. So they'd be like, you know, there's rum and raisin. They'd tell me the first day, like, because that was, that was one. So Aye. they'd tell me that and they're chocolate, you know, chocolate ice cream. But then they would get a little bit more like even savory ones as they went on. Aye. So the guy would be like, tell them it's like a pastry and beef ice cream. And I, I was like, well, you know, he, he's Fair the enough. chef. And I, I was telling people, like, I, I, couldn't stand, I couldn't stand being a waiter because I can't balance so many yeah. different it's, things. Yeah, it's it's, it's like, like stand-up is like one thing. Yeah, I think like me, Subway was probably the worst job I've ever had because working with people's food is when you really see how angry, when somebody's hungry and they're in a rush yeah, and you don't make a sandwich exactly how they like it. I remember one woman would be like, bit more sauce, bit more sauce, bit more sauce, bit more sauce. That's too much sauce. And I was like, I was like, let me get your salad for you. <laughs> like, but it's, do you know what's crazy though? Because I, I, like it's been, I've, I've always been like quite proud of the fact that I treat people who work in shops well because I've got experience working in them. But as I've got older and I've spent more and more time not working in shops, I'm starting to lose my fucking patience with people. Yeah. I, I think that's an age thing though as well. I've been trying to get people to get angry about this for a couple of weeks now, right? So my local petrol station, I've, they've got like self-service checkouts now. Yes. Right? And I was going in to get petrol and cigarettes, which are two things that you can't get in a self-service checkout. Right? Yeah. So I'm in this queue and there's an English lady and I, 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 I've been in the shop enough to know she'd recently been promoted and she was taking it dead seriously. Right. right. Well, I, has she gone from like bottom level up or wrong? Yeah, or is she I, already up or wrong? I, I have this. I'm trying to work on it as a bit of stand up, but nobody really understands it. I think the, the the most dangerous people in the world are recently appointed assistant managers and they yeah. should be hated. Yeah, no, no, I 100% know what you're talking about. So we're all in this in the queue and she's like, uh, You're paying cash a card? You're paying cash a card? To everybody. And she gets to me, she's like, You're paying cash a card? And I went, Card, but if they get petrol and cigarettes. And she went, Card though. And I'm like, Yeah. So she brings me over to this machine. So I'm like, Fucking put in a tin of coke, whatever. She's like, are you getting petrol? Yeah. She starts working on the machine to put the petrol in. Then she's like, I'm like, can I get cigarettes? And then she calls another guy over to get me cigarettes. And I'm like, now there's three of us working here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I should be on the staff too. I could have went to him and been out of here. But because you're all like, no, we've got a machine and I'm... Had to, and I, nobody, I, I can't express how fucking angry I was. Yeah, it's like the, um, you know, the pay pump petrol thing. Yeah. Those like those ones that are like entirely paid to pump. There's no place you can go into. Yeah, of course. I realised recently there's just like a fella sitting in a wee hut out the side of it. Aye. So if you get into trouble, he comes out and it's like, well, either like have someone serving or don't have him yeah. at all. It's I've never used a self service checkout by myself. <clears throat> what do you mean? I've never I've never completed that task without having to get somebody to come over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, never yeah. been a fucking point where I like are you over twenty five? Yeah, just for this Red Bull. That's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like. The fact that you can have eight self-service checkouts in a Tesco and two people running back and forward. You're yeah. like, just let them work here. Yeah, and then and they always have to key in 19 numbers. Yeah. They scan two bits of paper and uh, then it's like two seconds. There's like nothing Tetris. Nothing annoys me more whenever a fucking... It doesn't pick up the bag. Yeah. You're just like, this is fucking... Yeah. I know how the pedal works. Cunt. <laughs> I've been inside the system. I, I know how this works. What I can see the woman with the red dress and you're making me do all this shit. What pisses you off? And, like, what, what's your number one thing that really pisses you off? People who, if you're watching TV, just go on TikTok. So, or somebody so, who takes a phone call without excusing themselves and leaving the room. I fucking hate it. Right. I hate it. So, like... I would commit acts of violence if somebody you know, just picks the phone up and starts talking. Do you know what I think is a nice touch mm. where you can almost beat them to it? Say we're sitting here after we record a podcast, your phone rings, and I know you're a bit weird about answering. Mm -hmm. Here's a nice touch. Here's what I'm going to say to you. Here, work away. 
Aye, but that's that. Fair enough. I understand it in this sort of context, right? Yeah. But if I'm sitting in my house watching my TV and my girlfriend's phone ring and she's like, "Hey, what's going on?" and I'm like, "They're going to the other room." So if you're watching it because it's going to disrupt your program, yeah. or you don't like the etiquette, or of just my my mum will do this thing where she'll pick the fo- she'll FaceTime right, and she's sixty three, so she FaceTimes like that's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah, yeah. Right, and she'll just point the phone at like my nephew, and then right. not say anything. So whoever she's talking to could just watch my two year old nephew take a shit yeah. or whatever it is, right? But she'll be like, hi, and then she'll go, turn that down, and keep talking. And I'm like, I was here first, you cunt. Right. I know it's your house, I understand that. Thanks for letting me live here until I was 34. But that's rude. Do you know what I'm, do you know what I think is in the same vein of stuff? Here's one thing really, really annoys me. Mm-hmm. Me and my wife in the car, she needs to take a phone call. I'm listening to music, like I saw, like not the radio, like songs. Yeah. She turns the volume down to zero, but the song's still playing. Just, just stop it. it. Yeah. Just stop it. I'm with you on that. Just pause it. Oh, I was enjoying it. Can you that turn bit. that? Or we're just driving. Can you turn that down? Oh, yeah, yeah. Turn it down. I'll turn it down a bit more. Well, then yeah. what's the point? Well, I'll turn it off. Aye. I'll turn it off. But why yeah. am I turning it down? Right, yeah. I, I'm with you on that one as well. And I, I don't I don't like you watching a film. It's probably a common one. You're watching a film and then there's t- you're, you're in conversation during it. And then it's like, oh, we're wind that or who's that? Either we're, wa- we're watching what, this, we're, we're in or we're not yeah. at all. I hate if, if you put a film on, my girlfriend does this quite a bit, I'll put a film on, and if it hasn't grabbed her in the first 30 seconds, you just start going through her phone. So I'll be watching something like that I've been dying to see for ages, and then out of nowhere I'll hear like, uh, 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 and she's just fucking scrolling. Yeah. It's like, TikTok, this yeah. movie's shit, and I'm like, how do you know? Yeah. You haven't watched it? Yeah. By the way, please don't watch this, babe. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> what are you, um, what that, are you, people walking slow in shopping centers as well. <coughs> I'm no problem with you walking slow, but don't, uh, don't spread stop. out. Don't spread yeah. out as a family, and, do, and don't just stop and be like, "Oh, I don't know where I'm going now." Every time I know exactly where I'm going, every shop I go into. Every time you're trying to get out of the tube in London, you know, when you go up the top of the stairs and you're at yeah. the barrier, oh, a, a, a family of twenty five Italians Need decide to have a, a family re- reunion, Aye. all in sh- very shiny jackets. Yeah, you know? I yeah. Uh, London's. I haven't been to London now for about two years. Do you find the same thing that I have that when you get there, it's stressful as fuck? And then when you come back home to normal speed, you can't believe how slow everything is. Yeah. I used yeah. to get that. Like, I would spend like a week, maybe 10 days gigging in London. And when I was living in Donegal at the time and get so used to the pace that when I went back to Donegal and people were just, oh, I'm just going to leave the car in the middle of the street here now. Yeah. I would just lose my mind. <laughs> a policeman? <laughs> yeah. Just that's sure if you got Ambulance right. fucking move. <laughs> Why does like, Daniel O'Donnell live in that town? Dan- that's just, he's not from Donegal, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Isn't he? Yeah, that's how they all sound. Daniel. That's how, that's how everybody in Donegal sounds to me. Daniel. How you get, no, I'm going to kick your fucking... Yeah. You <laughs> Remember you lived just in the middle, like, not in, like, Letterkenny or anywhere. You lived in the middle of nowhere in Donegal. Yeah, well, it was, like, it was just outside of Derry, but it was a street, it was a wee tiny village, but it was, like, a, a really staunch Protestant Ulster Scots village in Donegal. Right, right, right. Which was, right, just, it was just a weird, cheap as fuck. Yeah. Uh, and I had a class, the kind of place where I was, like, I was only about 29 when I lived there. And I was like, if I was retiring at 60, yeah, this, this would be a place. dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How have you found gigging again? Loving it, man. Absolutely cannot you, get enough of it. So I all, I don't know if you're having this. As soon as gigs end, I have this thing where I, like, as in like when you're driving home or whatever, I'm just like back to normal. I don't feel adrenaline really after a gig. I'm just like, I'm, I'm good to go, good to go home and go to bed and stuff. Yeah. But because... It's back on again. And and you remember when stand-up was just back a bit? It's like you might have a one-off big thing once a week. Yeah. Because of the tour, sometimes you're out like four nights in a row. Yeah. I'm driving home being like, this is, this is, this is class. Yeah. This is it. This is back again. I've got a gig tomorrow night as well. So I'm like thinking of my bits. Yeah. And it, it proper feels like it's back. 100%. Like I've, I've loved the, the first gig I had back was in Bambridge. And I was like afraid again, and I was like, I forget mm-hmm. what it feels like to be afraid of this, mm-hmm. because it, I think you get to a certain point with stand up where you just know how to do it, and that's fine. Yeah. But I started going, I don't know if I know how to do this anymore. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Um, and then I got heckled, and straight away I was like, I'm back, baby. Ah. So genuinely, I I'd started the tour, and most gigs were good. A couple I just didn't feel like I did a great job, and then I was like, I'm just going on. Like, I, first of all, I'm not just called the audience. They haven't, they haven't seen stand up. Yeah. Maybe ever, but in like at least a year and a half. So then I was like, Man, I like doing crowd work. As soon as, I, as soon as I started doing that again, I was yeah. like, now well, this is I'm the same. It's, it's, now it's, this is back. It's really strange where like I've been doing crowd work at the start of it. 
And I mean, really slagging people as well, which I've never done before. I've yeah. never been the kind of that comes out. It's like, what the fuck are you wearing? Yeah, yeah, But yeah. for some reason, a year or a year and a half just pent up in the house. Yeah. Oh, I, I did. Po- uh, and people are loving it as well. Nobody's taking offense to it. It's, uh, it's great to see people being like, do him next. Yeah. Do me. At the, like, yeah. You know, why is there always fellas, like, especially after a gig, come up and be like, mate, fucking slag me off him. here. Like, and like, well, his dad died. Yeah. Do him. Like, I don't tell you about like, my first one back in Banbridge. <laughs> And this, this is weird as well. So the manager of the, of the hotel came up to me and he was like, listen, there's a guy sitting in the front row and I, he's in a wheelchair. He's got cerebral palsy. He fucking loves it. Gets stuck in them. And I'm like, no. Is William not open him for you? <laughs> but I was like, it's one of those things where as a comedian, I was going, I'm not going to just start on a guy with cerebral palsy. Yeah, but yeah. my comedian brain was going, have something in case he starts though. <laughs> right, so I'm in my head going through, what can I say to somebody with cerebral palsy if he slags me off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get to the end of the gig and the guy calls me over to get a photo and he's like, mate, honestly, fucking never be afraid to make fun of somebody in a wheelchair. You know, we love the crack as much as anybody else. And I'm like, I get that. Yeah. But I'm not going to just out of nowhere pick yeah. on you. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because they don't understand that, right? Yeah. So then I get home and it was pr- properly like first gig back in ages. Went home and was like, I'm going to have a drink. I'm going to have a wee fucking celebratory glass of wine here. Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting like sort of half pissed, being like, I'm really funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I get a message from the... the the guy's mate and he's like listen fucking Scott really had a great night uh, do us a favour share that selfie he's got on Instagram but do me a favour and like slag him a wee bit because he really does love the crack so I put up on Instagram like oh thanks to Scott for giving me a backy home right <laughs> and then I started taking shit off people on Instagram for making fun of a guy in a wheelchair who fucking told me to do it yeah <laughs> yeah I would love it if he rolled on with that, that tactic that's mate what yeah. the fuck I'm in a wheelchair like- please delete uh- <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm going to say something outra- Like, I hope this is true. I think he was at my show. Yeah. But then that, I'm taking a risk by was saying that. Was he in the front row, be best like, parking space? Yeah. Yeah, that'll yeah, be yeah, him. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I just love it. Like, even like the little bit of heckling and stuff, it does feel like... Because I was thinking, I was like, are these outdoor shows going to be really rowdy because everyone's back out because it's outdoor? Right. So I was like, flip, you know, it could go either way. And then the first time it happened, I was like driving home going... Thank God that was a rowdy one because that muscles worked again. Yeah, that's it, it does, and it's, especially the fact that they're outdoor gigs as well. They're kind of. I was at the Elk last night, and it was great. It was one of my favorite. It was, it was. It's a class venue, but I had a point where I went, "Fuck! If there was a roof in here, I'd have done an extra twenty minutes." Yeah, yeah. Just riding out laughs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, disappear, they disappear so quick. See, um, see at the Elk gig, um, we were upstairs getting food beforehand uh-huh. in the venue, and. Uh, Aaron had gone out, Butler had gone out and like sound checked and he was coming back up the stairs. So I see him and I, I'm recording him a video and I'm waiting to like jump out at him because, you know, I'm Aye. 33. And uh, I was like, this will be hilarious. So I don't know why I'm like the original prankster, but I was like, <laughs> I'm going to jump out and scare him. Like I did, uh, by the way, I jumped out and scared he- he- Mike in the office like a couple of weeks ago. And like halfway through it, I felt so bad because he looked like the saddest, most scared guy <laughs> in the second that I did it. He like, he didn't jump. <laughs> but I jumped out at him. And he just did like a real sad face. He-, he was bringing the tea in and I jumped out. And he just did a real sad face and then walked straight back out. <laughs> but there's nothing I enjoy more. Scaring someone? Yeah. Because like, but even yeah. my family, we all do it, and to the point where it gets more and more elaborate. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I've heard my ma giggle from my wardrobe. Right. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, really, really trying to yeah. scare And uh, But I remember one time when I was at uni, we were all doing that same shit, and one of my mates, Guy Paddy, he was the only, he was the alpha male of our flat. He was the only guy who could fight and, you know, could pull women and stuff. We were all just looking. <laughs> Do you any more clear still? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the lads was like, I'm going to get Paddy. And he jumped, like, Paddy came out of the shower or something. He jumped. Wah! Paddy's towel fell and he just punched the guy straight in the face. <laughs> no, like, just completely naked, smacked him right in the nose. It was a cracker. So I wait for the, I wait for Butler to come up the stairs at the venue and it's a big, long staircase. So I'm like, it's going to be good. And I stand on my phone and I'm waiting to do it. And then I jump out but at this before I can go oh, I started my jump I realised that the venue managers walked in before him so I <laughs> I, sh- I do the most lame thing ever and I revert to like being a kid who like imagining that guy's like a teacher I'm ready to go I jump out I'm in mid jump I realise it's the venue manager and I go oh I'm so sorry man. I, said, I said I thought you were my friend and uh, I just felt so shit doing it but I I as you know, I like scare my dad all yeah. the time, but he has he genuinely has a heart problem. So I had to say, I had to have a conversation where I was like, if I 
do one of these and you have a heart attack or die, if it's a good scare, can I still post can it? Can I use it? He's yeah. like, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, for a play. Jumping out and scaring, like there's nothing funnier than just jumping it's, out. It's the excitement of knowing they're coming around the corner. It's, and it's the bit where you're like, they have no idea. The, one of the best ones we did, like when I was a kid, there was a, there was a bat got into our house. I was about maybe 12 or something like that. And my mum was on the phone to my sister's Irish dancing teacher, right? So my mum, like one of those women loves to think she's dead middle class, but she's from the Gravacki Road and put it on. So she's right. a scum, right? <laughs> And she's on the phone. She was like, and she always gave my sister a hard time for dancing. She was on the phone going, um, <laughs> "Sly, she, yeah, really, really, like one of those proper Percy mums." Like, um, and she was like, "Well, yes, I think that um, Sophie danced fantastically. Um, I was really disappointed in my daughter, and I think that just you know, next we really have to maybe get her into extra classes and make sure because I'm spending quite a lot of money in these shoes. And my dad had gotten like an old Batman toy that I had, right, and t- just tied a string around it and just dangled it like in front of my mum, which was on the phone. And my mum went straight in there. You fucking dirty bastard! You fucking cunt, you fucking fucking kick and fucking I'd burn this fucking house to the fucking ground, you cunt! I fucking wish I'd ever mind you, you baldy fuck! Anyway, what was I saying there about the dancing? <laughs> like, so, uh, we, we did Newry on the tour, uh-huh. and William and somebody else was doing sport, and there's like five minutes to go to showtime, and William goes in to, he's like, oh, I'm away for a piss here. Now, I knew, I'm getting this up here, I knew he would go into the cubicle. I just felt it. So these were like private toilets. They were like in the middle of nowhere in mm-hmm. the vent. You know the Bank Nuries, like Hogwarts. Like. So I thought what I'm going to do is, I'll play the audio of this, I was like, I'm going to follow him up. And as he's in there, I'm going to pretend that I'm just this mental fella who doesn't know someone's in. What happened was, he's in the cubicle, he starts pissing. I walk in straight after him, but he doesn't know You're I going. am going up. And I take on this character and I stop doing it become, because I think to myself, I'm so weird. <laughs> right? I'm like, why am I doing this? So the, ca- the, the character I played, I was like, I'm going to pretend to be a fella who's just fucking mental in the head. And then I was like, pretend. What a- <laughs> He's going in that toilet to scare his disabled mate. And he's pretending to be mental. <laughs> But I go, what if, and then there's <laughs> gaps in this audio wise because I'm trying not to laugh because I start to go, uh, I start to say things like, oh, fuck, why have I got this fucking knife? Now it's only William in the, do- in the, in the whole place and I, and I know he's not going to come out till this fella oh. leaves. So I was like, I've got this fucking knife. And I said, I think I say, you should fucking stab everybody. And he, I know he's in there, right? No, no. <laughs> At no point do I reveal I'm me, so let's see what I have here. Now, also, halfway through this, I go, I think it's William in there. But oh, what if know, it is? Yeah. I know it was, but... Come down, Tommy. Come down, Tommy. Talking to myself. He's just started pissing. He's not making a noise. I go, who's that? Right, at that point I stop recording, but I go on to this thing of going like, I'm, I, I take on the character of Tommy, and I go, Tommy, you shouldn't have brought the fucking knife. He's a night out. I go, but someone's getting it. And, I, and he's like, he, by the way, he said, he's obviously like, go for a piss, but at one point the only thing I hear is a wee. Hear anything from apart from we oh <laughs> just one. and uh, I go on and on and then I'm laughing too much and I don't want to record him leaving the cubicle in case it's not him Aye. so I go back downstairs and then he walks down and I'm like is he going to mention it? And he goes there was some fella in the toilet there <laughs> and I went yeah mate that was me and he goes it was and he goes there's some mental bastard called Tommy and I went that was me though and he goes it wasn't, and I said, was he all like, you shouldn't have brought the fucking knife, and he went, nah, not really, didn't really sound like that, <laughs> then in my head, I was like, was that not William, and then was he in a different toilet, and, and there was some little fella, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I, that, that's taken it to a weird level, but I was gonna like, I was good. did I ever tell you the story, I've maybe told in the podcast before, about 
because I could see his feet under that cubicle right. about when I was manager in a call centre and I had to check what a fellow was doing in the toilet cubicle I tell you this no I told you this no so uh, I, I was like manager in a call centre and people used to include myself waste time all the time you know Aye. as well you just fucking disappear you sit in your phone all that sort of thing so there was this guy kept going missing for like 40 minutes at a time he was going down to the toilets and there was only one cubicle and just a couple of urinals in this small place and a fella came up to me and goes, listen, I need you to go down and sort of see if you can find out what he's doing because we can't accuse him of time wasting but he goes, I think there's, there's something not right there, some nod. Right. So I was like, right, and the fella goes down to the toilets and I waited, but like William, I waited about 20 seconds and I thought, right, I'll go down after him. So I walk in, but really quietly and I was like, I'm going to hear him doing some weird or talking right. or doing something. Five minutes pass. <laughs> There's like nothing going on. I'm like, I guess it's weird, but I can see his. Uh, I can see his his feet, right? Right. And I was like, mm, maybe he is just going to the loo. Maybe he has stomach problems or something. L- little bit of time goes by. Uh, I stand up and and uh, but eventually I keep checking down to see if his feet are in the same position. So I'm about to leave, and then I think maybe I'll go down on the ground in like a press up position. And not look under, but I'm far enough away where I could just see what's happening right. on the ground. So I'm like, I'll do that and then I'll leave just to see if he's doing anything weird. <laughs> I swear to God. I like quietly like went down in press up position, cream my head and look in. <laughs> he was doing it too. <laughs> I went down, I looked in. I didn't think he thought anyone was there. And I looked down <laughs> like this and he just went all right man <laughs> he goes he goes what are you doing and i went no nah, nothing <laughs> and then i came back and my boss went was he doing anything weird and i went no but i was i i 100 was that's amazing never forget it just looked down he had no facial expression the whole time i'm thinking you were going to be like and then the door opened nah he's doing nah. it too he was he was he was doing it too <laughs> Oh my god! Checking in on people, I think there's something weird. Working in a call center was where you 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 just see so many different types of people. Yeah, it's a weird environment. I, that was another one I did. Doing. Where like, again, something about call center toilets. They're a very like emotional place. Yeah, because I remember a mate of mine. I lived with him in uni. We both got a job in the same place, and but we're on like different contracts. So I had to like. I think I've told you about it before. I had to phone people and give them basically free stuff for BT. Yeah. But he had to phone people to try and get money off them. So with two very different jobs, mine was just like, yeah, sure, whatever. And he had to like fucking Wolf of Wall Street kind of thing. And he came over one day and he was like, Mick, I'm going home. He's like, I've just been crying on the toilet. Like, I just started fucking crying in the cubicle. And I'm 21 being like, oh, you're a fucking fruit, mate. Can't even yeah, do in 2021, your job. you could have that conversation to an expert level. But back yeah, then. Back then, I was like, mate, what? Stop. You'd be alright. Yeah, yeah. You were <laughs> like, freaking out. Don't, yeah, don't well, speak to me about that. Chin up, boy. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and the place was a fucking nightmare, but he went home that day anyway. And about a week later, after all the slag and I gave him, I find myself on the toilet, like, <laughs> right? Having a fucking breakdown, right? And then I hear, like, the door, and then the cubicle next to me, and then I just hear, <laughs> and I went, Shane? And he went, Mick? <laughs> And the two of us like came out of the cubicle like, do you want to just quit? Yeah. <laughs> we just went home. <laughs> we don't play Call of Duty all day. Oh, I love that. <laughs> this is a proper like... <coughs> I had a guy once like, just start talking to me in a cubicle and like, I yeah. was doing a shit. Yeah, like, but like normal conversation. Just like, chatting away. And then at one point he, pa- he passed oh. his phone under the fucking cubicle door and started showing me photos of his kids. Ah... And I still don't know who it is. I don't know if it was somebody saw me go in and went, oh, there's Mick, I'll chat away to him. Or just if it was fucking Tommy. Want to make... <laughs> like, just fucking... <laughs> the thing is... Though, Show him the Blackberry. See, since then, I've been Tommy more than I've been oh, Shane. Oh, yeah, it happens then. I, 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 gen- I, th- I could easily You're do You're the that. Daniel Day-Lewis of toilet pranks. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there will be blood. Ooh. Todd's about, <laughs> like Beatles about, but it's all toilet-based. <laughs> Pranks are fucking, pranks are class. Aren't they like a yeah. good prank? One of the best things as a kid, the prank phone call. Oh, if yeah. you could do a good prank phone call. I used to do a thing if we were having like sleepovers when I was younger, at like school, I would pretend to ring people and be, remember Dr. Fox, who was on the radio? Yeah, yeah. And I would offer people like the chat, I would say, 
this Dr. Fox, you probably the shittest accent, like just an English accent. Aye. And you would prank like girls you knew if you were like fucking all 11 and 12 and stuff. Aye. You'd phone girls and go, uh, say they were called Sinead. You'd be like, Sinead, it's Dr. Fox, you're live on hit radio. You have the chance to go and see Blue live in concert. All you got to do is answer this question. And then, of course, you'd burst out laughing. Aye. But like sometimes you'd ask to quit like a bit of pop trivia and then they straight away go, Oh, I don't know. And then you're like, "This is the this yeah, is the now we're ultimate. In. Yeah. yeah, this is the prank." My my mate used to phone my my mate was not called John Mills, but I was made. He would ring people and be like, "Hello, this is John Mills, home of the John Mills micro scooter. Would you like to buy a micro scooter?" And we would have fun with that for hours. As a builder, I once phoned my cousin. My cousin was somebody's phone a friend on who wants to be a millionaire, and I phoned him and tried to be Chris Tarrant. Oh. So I was like, "Hi, Mike. It's Chris Tarrant here, and uh, we've got John there." Hello. Like, right, completely forgetting who wants to be a millionaire's pre recorded <laughs> So it's just like, Mac, it was two days ago, mate. Do you, know what, uh, do, you know what the worst, do you know what the worst one I ever did? The worst one I ever did was not that long ago. You know the Cool FM cash call? Yeah. You know the way they phone you from like an unknown number? Uh huh. And you have to answer it and say the amount? I knew that my mother in law was doing it that day. And at the time, we're on air. They were like, we're going to phone someone now. I withheld my number. I phoned and said, um, I, th- I think you're supposed to just say the amount, but I said, this is uh, John Kearns from Kill FM here. Uh, what is today's amount? And she said Tell. the amount. And then I couldn't speak for like two yeah. minutes and hung up. And I was like, I couldn't even bring myself to burst out laughing because I, I felt that bad about it. I knew a girl who won it once. And... There was a point where she rang me, just like, I just want the cash call. And I was like, oh, fuck, her dad's playing a prank. And me and her dad were texting each other, like, you better fucking tell her. Because right, right, she's right. spending this money in her hell already. She had won it, but we were both just terrified. We both we do both you, thought we'd done the same prank. Do you want to prank someone we know? <laughs> Maybe. Do you? What would, we, what would we say we were doing? I don't know like, who could phone a comedian, like yeah. maybe William or Jordan, Jordan or something. Will Jordan, will yeah, if she's phone Jordan, be like, "Ooh, I'm your dad." Ooh. What? A, <laughs> what about? What she about? She would phone Jordan and tell me got the wrong heart. <laughs> we need it back. What about we phone William? And who was that guy? Said I was that guy. Tommy. 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 What about I phone him up for like a customer service call, and I'll be Tommy again, but like less mental Tommy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm trying All to right. think of what. See, a good prank phone call is one of those things you have to. You do have to plan a bit of it. So I, I've, I've, I've wanted. I want to phone into the Stephen Nolan show at some point and just be a character. Yeah, 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 yeah. I also want to phone into the Stephen Nolan show while drinking. It's on half ten in the morning. Yeah, I know. But I, I would. I think. I think there's a good drinking game to be played where every time somebody goes, I tell you what it is, Stephen. You take a shot. When someone says, Mr. Nolan, <laughs> it's finished the rest Steven, of your no, drink. No, Steven, Steven, Steven. Yeah, let me yeah, finish, Steven. Yeah. I let you finish. Fuck it, Steven. Steven. No, no, no. You're, you're cutting in the mouth. I'm cutting into you. So for some reason, every time somebody phones into the Nolan show, they go deaf halfway through it. Start talking like that there. Steven, let me tell you what it is, Steven. I'm Bob Fett. They took my heart. Steven. What? No problem. Shit, Steven. The, the, the sentence. Oh, no, all cultures have to be respected, but... <laughs> Not the blacks. <laughs> Mr. Nolan. I mean, I, I can't go around, it, around these days saying certain words. like, And then he proceeds to say a word. And they're like, yeah, of course you can't. <laughs> yeah, you, you never can't could. Either, you, weirdo. you never could. Yeah. Apparently that's not the term they're telling me. I, I don't know. For some reason, it's always a guy called Graham from Newton Abbey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody. Graham from Newton Abbey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Nolan. I tell you what, Stephen. I fucking forgot to uh, bump on you. You and your millions. You and your millions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay, uh, nah, <coughs> will we go from William and say, um, like, could I be from the, uh, no, that's hectic, I was going to say DLA. No, you better put phone on Paddy McDonald for that one. <laughs> uh, no, nah, well, th- well, maybe, I know, I'm trying we'll to think, do who do we know that's like, has anybody undertaken a task recently? What do you mean? Go we'll phone McCann, pretend to be his landlord in London. Oh, that's, is that good? Yeah, just uh, just a quick one, mate. Uh, Hi, is this your, Aaron McCann? Says me I'm wrong. This is Aaron McCann. <laughs> I'm just phoning from the apartment in London, and we've got a rat infestation, and apparently... Imagine he's like, well, what apartment's this? You're like, you know, the one in London that you went to. <laughs> you with, never had a backstory yeah, doing with this. With Tim. <laughs> 
Hey, hold on. I just I'll I, I'll phone William. Yeah. And and something will come to me. Um. So hang on. <laughs> phone. For oh, hey, what network would he be on phone wise? Um. You'll find out when he doesn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> right here we go. What's I'm booking him for a gig? Yeah. I asked him to do the live stream at 2 o'clock today and he didn't reply to me, so he deserves this. Hello? Hello, is it possible to speak to William, please? Yes, hello. William, uh, how are you doing? I got your number from Mickey Bartlett. I'm running a stand-up comedy gig in Glasgow for students. Could, could we get a quick chat about it? Uh, yeah, could you ring me back in like uh, an hour? I'm, I'm in work at the I minute. I can, mate. I can. It's time sensitive. Uh, if look, I'll I'll not keep you. It's a gig in the student union in Glasgow. Um, it's you and it would be you and Mickey. He says you might be up for it. Um, it's being sponsored by Fat Frog. By what? Sorry. Fat Frog. Fat Frog, yeah. <laughs> Alka Pops. No and. Uh, We'd love to love to get you on. I know you're maybe you're at work there, but we'd love to get you on. Uh, Shane, you're Scottish. Literally, just your voice, like. I mean, the only reason we were talking about prank phone calls, and I I, I chose you because I asked you to do the live stream today, and you didn't reply to me. <laughs> I did reply to Jim. Go, did you not get my message? All right, no, sorry, I'll see you too then. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you in a bit. Bye. <laughs> well, <laughs> here you live and learn. You live and learn. And Dan, that is quintessentially me, isn't it? That, that is great. very me. That was very good. Uh, I don't know where I tried. See, I try. I didn't want to make the guy like full Scottish. All right. So I tried to just give him like a little bit. William just sent me a screenshot of him saying to me, um, "I'll be there." So yeah, I feel I feel bad about that. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, he did. I said, "Fancy a live stream at two PM?" He said, "Hundred percent, mate. Would love to." Yes, sir. Uh, I'll just write. Ah, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the call. All right, get five frogs your way up here. See you at two then. I mean, you had him at the start. I know. You definitely had him at the start. I know. And then the accent just fell. Yeah. I, I should. You're right. You do need to like nail it down you need, a wee you need bit, to, like properly. Fucking. I want to do one now. Could you phone Jordan Robinson uh-huh. and say that it's just you're trying to book him for a gig? <gasps> Who did he tell me? So, somebody had asked him about doing a gig. Fucking Andrew O'Neill, right? Can you withhold your number and ring him? And I'll... Yeah. This is fucking class. So could you make, yeah, so would you say you're booking him for a gig? But by the way, tell him the money involved is fucking massive. Yeah. Be like, I don't know how you normally charge me. This is a corporate. We've got, you know, 10 minutes set. If we could do six grand, seven grand. Yeah. And if he says like, yeah, that's okay. I go, go like this, go, you know what? I think you're doing me a favor here. Call, you know, go up. Be like, no, you're just being polite. We can get you more. heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> just, I want you to just keep saying, I can get you more. Like, act like whatever you're offering isn't what, enough. I mean, what accent am I doing? Fuck. Uh, maybe down south. I'm thinking, I know he's... Could I'm you not, do a different accent from here? Nah, I wouldn't get away with it. I know, I'll, I'll just, I'll think of something. Okay. Just hold it up to the mic. I'm not going to feel myself, I'm going to go, I'm going to go in Scottish as well. Hello? Hi, is that Jordan Robinson? It is indeed, yes. Hi, Jordan, mate. I got your number from Andrew O'Neill. Uh, he was talking about doing a gig in South Shields in a few weeks, Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, absolutely no bother. Um, uh, let's see. I um, do you know Mickey Bartlett? <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, I, I just I just have um, a couple of commitments with him, so I just need to double check that uh, I'm not kicking with him or anything. Whatsoever. Go fuck yourself, Jordan, you cunt. <laughs> Right, thanks for being Chinese. All the best, mate. Fuck. 
We need, to work, we, we need to work on that man. Why are we? I have a drama degree. Like I thought that was fucking. <laughs> We're the worst prank uh, phone call guys. <laughs> how quickly do you think William text them, being like, "Be careful, boys." Yeah, the lads. <laughs> like, the lads are at it. <laughs> the scamps. She, she and Mickey must be having a sleepover in 1999. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. I, I really, really enjoyed that. Ah. Uh, we gotta get better at that. Like Definitely. we gotta nail Next that. Next time I come on, we're gonna do a fucking builder. Yeah, we'll throwing in a bomb scare. <laughs> Colin's doing a tour show. Not tonight. He's not. <laughs> Pre marks on fire again. Quick, get a bucket of water. <laughs> Ah, oh, pranks. Are you getting tomorrow night again? Then you, where you? Where's your next? Uh, no, I'm kind of at the time we're doing this. I'm I'm done for a couple of weeks. Oh, happy days. Thank you. Yeah, I had that weird thing where like I booked a bunch of stuff and then forgot you have to keep booking it. I I I had these gigs all together and I went. I spent a year and a half complaining about having no gigs and then it. I started to get a little bit moany about. I've been out last ten nights in a row and then Aye. I caught myself on very quickly and was like, "Thank God, I exactly. have one hundred percent." Because like, if we were gigging six seven years ago whatever you unless you're doing solo shows yeah. you're not gigging at the minute yeah or exactly. you're doing support for someone that is yeah. you're not gigging so like there's dozens maybe hundreds of people that do stand up in this country who just can't do gigs yeah i know it's so it's so uh it's so nice just to be in a privileged position now where you can sell a few tickets and, and the musicians bring like, the art to the world yeah um the I, one, like, there's one of my teachers sorry just we'll, we'll talk serious in a second but one of, one of my old teachers who's been to a bunch of my gigs at the gig in tomb last night i was chatting to her after and she was like do you remember what you said to me the last time i was at one of your shows and i was like no and she went you were telling some story about your dick <laughs> and i was like that's definitely when one of your educators yeah says the words you were telling some story one about of your, dick. your one of your men one of one from the collection yeah, from the alma mater <laughs> was like you were telling some story about your dick and uh apparently <laughs> i was like i went oh, i'm telling this story one of my teachers in the front row and then i went uh, I went to a Catholic school. Look, she's already seen it. And I bust my whole laughing at her telling me that. She went, you're laughing at your own jokes. And I went, that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, weird situation to what, have when you're When you're on the road doing gigs, do you like hospitality? Do you like... Because I love it when I go to a venue and they go, mm. listen, we can stick you on a bit of food here. See, I can't eat before a gig. So I have, to, right. I have to eat by like four or five o'clock. Um, right, right, or right. I'm just like fucking... Because I don't chew. Because look at me. Um, yeah. So, I, yeah, I always feel like it's a waste when they put food on, and then it's even more of a waste when they put drink on because I'm like, I'm driving. Like, yeah. Um, do you know? Do you know what a lovely touch was? We did Kelly's last week there, and the England game was on. Mm-hmm. So we sorted the time so that the gig was over at halftime of the match, so everybody could watch it. And we comedians got to watch it too. They put on a hotel room in the venue for us, and sent up pizzas and whatever Last. food and drink you wanted and the boys just sat in the hotel room watching the game Aye. it's unbelievable so I think I, yeah it does but I, I, I then, then you go some places and, and, and you go here would I be able to get a water and they're like don't know we'll see Aye. some places you go to like do you have your own mic like, yeah yeah lad you probably have all the gear yourself Aye. you're like I, I, you're gonna need a coke to you man cunt you? like <laughs> yeah it, I think it depends on like because I, I, obviously because a lot of people people know I love fucking boozing so I quite often just get treated like one of the lads that works there. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I'm also I, I don't like. It's only been this this outdoor tour because Shine have been sending someone down to get the sound set up. You can just turn up and you're good to go. By the way, if that it's wasn't so happening, nice. that was only a last minute thing where they were yeah. like, "Here, do you want do you want someone to come down with you?" And I was like, "Do, do we need it?" I you go to the, like, you go to places and like they don't know what a lot of people think just because you do stand up, all you need is you don't need anything. You yeah. just need. Speakers, that's <clears throat> it. You need people to be able to see you, the sound, yeah. some sort of lighting, stuff like that. Like I did a wedding last weekend. The couple were absolutely great. The gig went pretty well, but the guy who managed the hotel, I was like, um, can you just introduce me? Because I was just there by myself. I was like, can you? And he was like, yeah, no. And straight away, he like, brings you on like it's the queen walking into the room. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mickey Bartlett. Uh, yeah. And I went, where should I stand to do this? And he went, oh, go table to table. And I'm like, are you fucking mental? I've had this a lot. Do you like the move about? No. No, I'll stand here where I'm looking at me and then I'll... Yeah. I'll say I'm doing half an hour but I'll cut it short at 20 and then I'll fuck yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, I've done with the old bar. I'll do 20 and we'll see how we go. Exactly, you know, yeah. Which, is, which see, means it's going, going to be 19 minutes. For, yeah. Uh, weddings, weddings are so much... F- I hadn't done many of them before all this but I think they're brilliant now because people are treating it like, fuck here, let's make the most of it. We're yeah. out here. We're getting to see a performance whereas if you were a regular wedding comedian... I'd say three, two, three, four years ago. I'd say they were brilliant. Yeah, I think it's like, 
again, I think when you get booked for a wedding here and you're being booked because people like the bride and groom know who you are. Yeah. You can kind of just, just do stand up. Yeah. Yeah. I did one yeah. right before like the circuit breaker lockdown, like September last year. Um, and I went in thinking I'll be clean because it's a wedding and there's family and stuff here. And they were going for none of it. And then I just went, fuck it, let's double down. and went full filth. And they were like, yes! Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's the boy we paid for! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then the one I did the weekend, though, was I couldn't tell if I was doing really well or if the entire wedding party was just laughing at the mother of the groom's face because she fucking hated me. <laughs> like, I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you mean. It's an interesting experience to have, like. That's always the, 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 the nut that you got to crack. Yeah. Is, is, like, the mother of the groom or the mother of yeah, the Yeah, you're bride. trying to flirt with her, like, yeah. what's up, shorty? Uh, Aaron Butler we yeah. had a wedding recently and the mother of the bride you know the quote was thrown back at him by actually the venue manager which don't know why they got involved but the quote was thrown back you ever get someone quote your set back and out of context you're like quite rude somebody just went up to him and went butt plug seriously you said butt plug maybe she thought that was his nickname no, that's his bit. Or in the butt plug butler. his bit he's like growing up people call me butt hair butt face butt plug oh, right, okay. she went up after him butt plug you serious? That's crazy. And then he had to like defend his art and be like, yes, butt plug was part <laughs> yes. of the thing. Invented in 1912. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, the, I... The butt plug has become a staple of the I suppose history. I did vocalise the term butt plug, but it was to set up a further bit <laughs> within yeah. his head. Um, yeah, I can't I, call it an arse dam, can I? But then like, because he... <laughs> because my he, hole blocker. Because <laughs> he got told off for that. Then I went on as like an altar boy. Yeah. I was like the nice. I was like... Saying plays at every joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man, wedding gigs. You haven't so, booked like, for a funeral? We were done for a funeral. Yeah, would you do a wake? Would you stand up at a wake? Fucking that could be, weirdly, That could be yeah. unbelievable, couldn't I, it? I honestly think that might be way more crack than a wedding. That's what I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. Uh, or if, especially if you knew the person and it's one of those environments where it's like... Not that it's not taken seriously, but you know what? At the, we're, we're like, listen, he'd want you to fucking take the piss. Right. But Sitting in a wake room when old stories are flying about, that could be a good I, crowd. I've been to a wake, several wakes, like in my family. And I remember my uncle, when he died, it was like a fucking roast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people were getting up and taking turns. Literally standing. I thought you like, like he got cremated. No, <laughs> <laughs> no we're Catholics, mate. <laughs> Buried him. Uh, but I remember like people literally leaning on his coffin and being like, do you ever hear about the time he tried to build a fucking go-kart that deck? Getting him out in the headlock and all I, like, but, this I, I once heard of a funeral my uncle went to <laughs> and my mum said of the family where everybody got steaming and at one point they literally took the fucking body out of the coffin and started dancing with it. <laughs> like, that's insane. Imagine he started dancing himself. I know. That's, that's man, there's all nothing, I don't care what anybody says. I've been like, to a load of wax and there's been a few, I've done stand-up about it, but the, the few times where someone has left me in my, in a room with a dead body on my own. Yeah. You never don't hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's terrifying. Yeah. Would you? Would you want? To, are you going to be buried? Or are you be cremated? Or are you get put in a mushroom suit? I get a mushroom yeah, suit. Yeah, I want to. I want to do something mental. Like I'd like to be cremated, and then like fired out of a massive bra. Yeah. Off a cliff. Slings off a cliff. Yeah. The cliffs of Moher. Or something? Yeah. Or yeah. even just to the soundtrack of. Uh, oh, oh, Mickey. You're, you're so the fine. voice coming and understand. <laughs> like yeah. doing. Yeah. Yeah, but I want the dying sound effect added in. Would you like it if we did like a gig in your honour when you die, if I die, if I happen to die after you, which uh, I mean, might, uh, yeah. um, would you like it if I... The only way that could happen is I'm a better driver than you. Yeah. <laughs> Safer, I mean. Would you like it if, you know, like hair powder, would you like it if when you died, everybody went out quiffed up by you? You know what I mean? That'd be good, yeah. That'd be, that'd be yeah. class. Or just cut me up in that line of cat. You want to be sniff, sniffed? Yeah, just sniffed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um... Or play a prank on me. Put me in a hairdryer. <laughs> Maybe the first time you've been all over my face. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What, the first time Mickey blew around here? Blue, yeah, blew yeah. all over my face. Yeah, um, works, works. yeah, I think a prank, that'll be a good way to do it. Yeah. Just put me in salt and say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you've been eating them, you dick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got some questions. From um, from Instagram, so we'll far far through a few of those. Lovely. Uh, somebody says, "What's a podcast?" <laughs> um, Willie Palmer, William Palmer, William Palmer, ironically says, "How's the Willie?" Um, it's weird now that I don't look down expecting to see a foreskin. I can't right. tell you how weird that is because mm-hmm. I thought for the first like year, I keep being like, "Oh, I remember I like when somebody I, loses a hand, they can still feel it." Yeah, it's 
you know what it's like? Um, what's the best way to describe it? You know when uh, you know when you get a haircut mm-hmm. and you go like, why haven't I always had my hair like this? Like you know when you don't think you need a haircut Aye. and you get a haircut and you go, oh, this looks way better than it was, and I'm yeah. always this is me now. I like I I. If I think of my own dick, yeah. I think of it as a circus. I don't think of it back Aye. to the old. I've been thinking about getting it done just for the aesthetics himself. Honestly? Do you lose anything off it? No. Yeah. Do you know what I thought? I've said this before. I thought I would still have a retractable... F- <laughs> I thought Aye. I would still have <clears throat> a retractable foreskin. Yeah. But it was just further down. But I don't. And I didn't even know that. The foreskin gets cut off and then the skin around get, just gets like stitched into the... Aye, like halfway the shaft. up the shaft yeah so it's way it's like a smoother look yeah you know there's none of that like you know I think foreskins are a little bit like sneakier it's like what are you hiding behind there you know what I mean yeah whereas now Thrush. it's like you can see you, you can see me yeah you know it's, it's like it's out there yeah. and uh, have you done like I don't know if this happened like have you, have you been to the gym and got like gym dick without a foreskin what do you mean gym like, dick do you ever, like if I do like a, a serious workout when I come home there's no dick there anymore Oh, you know, it's just yeah, 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 like yeah, skin's yeah. the only thing I have left. Yeah, in that yeah, situation. Yeah. Hmm. I think. Do you, have you been freezing cold without a foreskin? Not yet. Not yet. I yeah. think when it comes into the winter months, I'll I'll go through that something maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's because if I if we were doing stand up, I go. That's because you said you're spotting the soul boys because right. the siren went past. Aye, it always gets a laugh at a comedy yeah. club when you're in the middle Here of the siren. Start the car. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, how's your Willie? Uh, Willie's 100 percent dead on. And, and can I extend that question to you? Yeah, my Willie's grand. Yeah. Um, yep. Would you would, you would you get would you genuinely get circ- you wouldn't feel weird about getting? Circ- no, because I had that same thing you had a couple of years the, ago. The like tightness. The, yeah. Like, um, and it it just went away, but it, it I probably had it for about a year, and it was it's. Fucking annoying. Yeah. Like I had to, if I was gigging, I had to sit down when I peed because you couldn't control where it was going to go. Oh. Mine was like fucking. Urgh. Do you tuck it back? Day to day? Do I tuck you it back? tuck it in? My foreskin? No, your dick. Like, do you tuck the dick and balls in? You know the way sometimes you do it for a funny photo? Yeah, yeah. Was that just you happen to get your photo taken at that time or did you do that for the photo? Oh, I know I do that for the photo, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, yes, I will walk around like that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's Just to see I mean. how it feels. Yeah, yeah. Um, quite often I will just walk around like that just to make my girlfriend feed my balls and they're out the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just because I think it's funny. Looks like a chicken's neck. Yeah, yeah. From yeah. the back. Okay. It looks like an angry cartoon character. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick Quinn says... Conor McGregor overtook McGoldrick's earnings this year, ranked as Forbes' highest paid athlete in the world. Do you rate him as a fighter? Can you convince Arlene Foster to model for the Manscaped crew? <laughs> I mean, I don't think I could, but McGregor, I think McGregor's fighting this weekend. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you like McGregor? Are you a McGregor guy? He's a weird, like, I always, I, I love the kind of hype that he brought to UFC, and I don't really watch UFC enough, Same. so this is one of these things Same. where I've, like, I've, these are things I've heard people saying. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I mean, it's, it was good. Really you think fun. the you think Alvarez the like, you think point for point the Undertaker is the best UFC fighter? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I've, I've the balls is like the, a bunch of people have just. I think he he's partied too hard in between fights. Um, yeah, and I, but also you hear a lot of really bad stories about him as well. From yeah, his private life and shit like that. Um, I think it was all like it was all almost like probably all psychology in terms of how well he was winning obviously a great fighter too yeah but before people went into the thing they were beat because he was so good in the pre in the yeah. promo stuff that they probably like second guessed themselves he just had that. them all wound up and stuff like that yeah but as soon as he like he got beat and that confidence kind of goes and he starts being a bit more humble if, if, if you want again I watch much UFC he's probably just like any other fighter now in terms yeah. of if you were fighting him, you'd just be like, well... I think there's definitely, like, there's something in... Because there was a few times where he had, like, predicted what round he was going to win in and all that, like, that Muhammad Ali kind of vibe. Yeah. But there's something in that, because I remember I re- actually read a, a book about Muhammad Ali a few years ago, and, like, he would literally... To try and psych out Joe Frazier, he was driving his tour bus up onto Joe Frazier's garden with his mates with a megaphone, just slagging him off, like, when he was trying to sleep. Right, so that's so sly. So that's why when I, when like when Ali died, Joe Frazier was still like, nah, fuck him. Oh, I like, thought you said he was at the gravesite. No, he hated him. All right, right until, like, Because the book that I read was it was it was in the nineties, so it was before Ali was even diagnosed with Parkinson's, um, and I thought he was just like sort of punch drunk, and everyone was like, he's still a great man. What? A, and Joe Frazier was like, fucking hate that guy. Yeah. Um, and then I think there's, I've seen like a Tyson documentary. He would do the same sort of stuff. Tyson used to put. Uh, 
like tiles on the shoulders of his dressing gun so he looked bigger when he came out. Oh, when just he, to suck the opponent down? Like, well, well, well Wilder tried to do that thing with that 25 pound suit or whatever it was. Remember the last Fury fight? Yeah. The only Wilder wore like the big, like, what would you describe it? Like a, like a chain suit? Like a metal suit? A what? Like armor, yeah. yeah. He came out in this big, massive thing, and Tyson Fury in his own was like, "That's, <laughs> that's weird. Like, what, uh, are, you what doing? are you doing? Yeah, it's not scary. It's like, oh, I'm a superhero, weird man. It's like, who are you supposed to be? You look like a bird man. <laughs> and then Deontay Wilder basically said after the fight, he's like, I was pretty tube going into the fight because that suit was so heavy. Aye. it's like stuff like that. Like, if it works, brilliant. If you don't, you look like Aye, such you a look like Yeah, it's a, it's a mad game. The old fighting, you're not trying to stop. I wouldn't doing stay us. up for fights. Yeah, I've never done it in my life. Wouldn't. I, I once stayed up for um, one McGregor fight and I didn't even have any like I, I, I had no decent laptop or anything to watch it on but thankfully somebody C-Fax. had left their phone up against their TV so I watched it on someone else's TV on Facebook remember the guy who streamed <laughs> remember the guy who streamed one of the fights in his glasses there was like a guy who went YouTube live and he filmed his glasses because he was watching the fight Aye. and he just filmed the reflection on black glasses it was fucking great that's a great idea uh, Mark says why uh, why is pooing sometimes pleasurable sometimes painful also why is the food in the I'm just going to say this he said it why is the food in the remore so bad yet everyone goes there I, I'm a fan I like it the remore of, yeah. of the north coast yeah lovely I'm a fan yeah. um, he says why is pooing sometimes pleasurable and sometimes painful I've never had a painful poo in my life. No. Every poo I've had, it's been enjoyable. Uh, Do you I'm take thankful. your time in there? Oh, I have to. Right. <laughs> I could see. I mean, you. I mean, it's mostly wiping, but. Right, uh, right, right. Yeah. How many sheets do? There's a big question. How many sheets do you wipe I, with? Or are I, you a buncher? I'm no, I'm not a buncher. Um, I actually go three. I go three. I go three and then a fold. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing I have noticed, I've been living on my own now for about a fortnight, and I went through twelve toilet rolls in a week. Which is a lot for one man, like it's a lot for a family. Yeah, that's a that's a lot. Now, that's a lot for a restaurant to go yeah, through. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. An army wouldn't go through that much. Is it just because you have your own house? You're like, man, I, I could. I, I get, you're entitled. You're I like, literally I'm forgot. My girlfriend stayed over last night. And I literally forgot to close the door and was taking a shit because I've just been shit with the door. I, I completely forgot she was there. That's such a wee boy move. Yeah, she walked past. You're like, like, hello. Sorry, forgot. I'm sorry, doing, I'm doing poo. Sorry. No one a window. Sorry. <laughs> like me when the, the hotel manager walked past. I, the I thought you were my friend. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to screw my mouth. Um, Sinead McGuire, are you moonlighting as a doctor? Yeah, just another one of my lookalikes. Dr. Mark Pemberton, lucky guy. Uh, no. Uh, I can't think of him. <laughs> okay. Mel Robinson, yeah, what's podcast? Okay, got that. Um, Matthew Keenan says, what's your secret behind in scoring worldies, especially on council pitches? Yeah, I mean, look, here's the thing. You lost me after secret. Is that a football term? Yeah. God, yeah. Um, I was, sec- well, no, secret isn't a football term. I don't know, but after yeah, that, Yeah, yeah, council worldly? pitches, yeah, I scored a worldly. I scored, I sort of, is, a world, is, that, is that like a screamer? World class, yeah, screamer. Yeah. Sort, of, sort of, I don't even want to, nah, move on. But I, it was, I was playing in Bally Walter last week or, um, we ground there, just scored a whirly. couple pitches, and yeah, I fuck it. So I um, I was about no, I was just saying, it was about about 25 30 yards out, and nah, I don't know, I just I mean, got the ball, saw the keeper was off his line, and just dinked it over his head just in, the, in, in the far corner. And sweet, and is that, um, that? Hmm? how old was the wee fella you scored against? What it's under 11s, but oh, right, right. you know, it's still he, was, he needs he, to learn, it's under Punk 11s, bitch. but he had actually he was 11. So I th- he, he shouldn't have been playing anyway. either. Yeah, you, it's just right. One. He shouldn't have been yeah. playing either. Uh, I've actually been watching the football, and um, I, this is—I don't know if this is a hack premise for a joke, but I laughed at it. In the Ukraine England match, there was a point where the Ukrainian goalie was talking to his mates like that, mm-hmm. obviously to try and stop people like lip reading. Yeah, but I was like, "But you're from Ukraine, <laughs> <laughs> and you're playing England." Like I don't think Harry Kane's like boys. Uh, the keeper dropped his end, and I think. He's going to try and catch the ball. <laughs> and also, I'm the Australian Harry <laughs> yeah. Kane. He's cocked me, shut up. What's all of a sudden, your accents are flawless. Right? A mum a mom with cerebral palsy knew it was you. <laughs> so the Scotland manager, you've been out exit from the Euros. How do you feel? Yes, well, I wouldn't <laughs> be so sure about that. Uh, and we have Joe's jo- on the radio now talking I- about his next, his next attempt. I-, I think we're going to have a good game. <laughs> I thought you were saying 
why was a Ukrainian guy covering his face, like, as in with a face mask? Because, like, it's Covered. Ukraine. Oh. Chernobyl, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, of course. I wouldn't course. worry about it. Yeah. Um, Alan Booth says, have you ever been secret? Have you ever secretly thought a heckler was funny but still had to shut them down? Yes. Oh, man, I love a funny heckler. Yeah. And, like, and I think the mistake people make is always having to, like, come back to it. Sometimes you have to go, fair man, fucks. The best one I ever had was in the Empire one night. And I was, I think, around about that time, like, Northern Ireland had been voted the sexiest accent in Europe or something stupid like that. Oh. So I was doing all this fucking sexy, stupid accent stuff, whatever. Because, um, yeah, we voted the sexiest accent in Europe, but also the smallest dicks in the UK, right? And I had a joke about that was the smallest dick thing came from a survey. And I'm like, a survey is just answering questions. So who the fuck's being honest? Like, do you have a big dick? Like, not that tall, nah, it's like bubble wrap. <laughs> right? And there was a guy in the front row of the Empire. And so I, I did it like a bit and I was like, right, I'll start talking to the crowd. I went, so where are you from? And he went, I'm from Belgium. And I went, oh, we've got a sexier accent than you. And everybody went, yeah. And he just went, but I have a bigger dick. <laughs> it's tremendous. Here it is. Yeah. Well, Although with uh, our accents, he's, he's Welsh. Uh, he said, yeah. <laughs> it is not unusual. <laughs> uh, Stuart Hanlon says, if Buzz Lightyear didn't know he was a toy, then why did he freeze when people came into the room? Man, don't even. Nah, fuck off. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Chris Kelly that's the way the people drew him yeah because that's what the Disney ones that's did that's what the Pixar did you fucking um, my mate says you just show up uninvited to weddings to tell jokes we think she's a spoofer set the record straight is she a spoofer yeah no she's not yeah we just we just go to weddings and, and, yeah, yeah. and ask is there any chance I could get you try some new stuff here? Try it, yeah. it, I think it's a good environment to go out, I pick think some so new much. stuff about. I, I think it, it shows a couple on their, the day of their nuptials that it's life isn't always as you planned. Exactly. You need to learn that. I think that's how you make a marriage strong. Here's 30 minutes with dicks. Be ready for anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to come in here, use the N-word ironically, and see how far we can get. How's your recovery going? Happy with the result? I mean, I presume, again, that's about uh, my foreskin. Happy with the result? Yeah, 100%. Have you used Pardon? it? Have you used it yet? On my finger? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have I used you it yet? You have to wank different with no foreskin. Have I used it yet? No. Um, I. Here's the thing. There was a bit of a problem. Right. Uh, so everything now has just been filtered through my big toe. The tubes have been connected yeah, there, so yeah, so yeah. so that's the way it is. Uh, but still, I'm happy. I noticed with, your sock was wet, actually. Yeah, I'm happy with the look of it. Yeah, but it doesn't work. Yeah, uh, but it looks good. That's because that, that is one thing. I think that is a common problem, especially with the, the current cost of the NHS. The amount of guys who've gone in for circumcisions and woke up with a big toenail on yeah. their dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the hard. That's where you got to accept the what the NHS yeah. is. Yeah, and it's just. I mean, clapping doesn't make a difference. It's the the hardest bit I found. I, not, I don't know myself. My dick's perfect, but. Um, <laughs> is, is the actual trimming of the nail yeah is the bit that terrifies most people that's a that's um, a tough one now when you're there's saying no good the, way to do that do you do it over the, over the toilet do you do it over the sink do you do it at the end of the bed do you wait until you get out of the shower so it's soft see when I'm the nail of course manscaping mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I put a small bin on the toilet seat and stand over it I just stand directly over the toilet seat with the lid up and then just flush it does it all go down yeah I thought it was just go. a wee bit of bleach or whatever just, before you clean your toilet. Just ah, Dan, you did as well in Mickey's toilet. Yeah, that's the only reason I got a house of my own. The conga line of boys yeah, just yeah. Morning, <laughs> lads. buzzing up. Leave a door open, you're in Mickey's. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just have those like Wild West saloon doors yeah, in your toilet. That's what I call her. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to ask you about you know, I know you've said that. Deck Chair and Yum's podcast at the minute is you kind of like almost like telling conspiracy theories you're like no you know you've kind of got into this thing where like people are coming to you with mad stuff yeah and you're like going against it no you become maybe more skeptical but let me ask you what's a big one you've heard recently like what's doing the rounds because we're not hearing about I, in, in like the mainstream stuff I look at or whatever no one's really it's, it's has strange. it died off a bit uh, yeah, but, conspiracy theories I, th I think Personally, I think what happened is once people start getting let out again, the lockdown starts easing, people stop giving a fuck, including me. <clears throat> yeah. Because even though th there's a lot of... It's, it's, hard to, it's hard to really... You would have to, you have to spend all day, every day, really researching that stuff. And I've... The podcast is now funnier when it's Connor going, we need to hear this one, and me going, fuck off. Right, right, right. Um, what was the last one where you went, 
No. Oh, there's no. been loads, but there's been so many. Like, we got to the point, there were so many weird ones, we were, we wouldn't even mention them on the podcast. Because then we were like, nobody's going to take any of this seriously. There's, there's that many crazy... Right. Like, I've seen a photo, and it's definitely photoshopped, and it's Barack Obama, his mum, and an old Eva Braun. <laughs> like... In a Nando's? Yeah. There's, like, there's, there's so many absolute <laughs> batshit insane yeah. things out there. Like, I saw, like, someone I know well posted up a thing, and it was like, you know, like a satanic cult of celebrities. Yeah. And it was like, they were all wearing black cloaks, and they were all standing around a dark room in front of, like, a bath of blood with like, yeah. a, a dead goat in it or something. And it was like Lady Gaga, Hillary Clinton, yeah. Obama, all these people. And I was like, you know... With everything we fucking know in general, that's not outside the realms of possible. I don't know that doesn't happen. Yeah. But what I'm pretty sure doesn't happen is when they're all doing it, someone goes, get the get a snap here. Get a snap. <laughs> Everybody in. <laughs> <laughs> don't be uploading this fucking thing. The real conspiracy. Who took the photo? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, there, there's loads of fucking... Cre- it, it's, it's kind of a shame too. The conspiracy series got so big and then so ridiculed that now... Anything the government does that no one likes gets treated like a conspiracy theorist. They're like Nickelback. You know I mean? Conspiracy theorists are yeah. like Nickelback in a way. They were, like they were massive. Yeah. Everyone had the album. And now yeah. it's like they're still making music. but yeah. like And it rhymes, but it all sounds the same. Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, I just, I find it interesting. And like, the, even the movement of conspiracy theorists, like the hardcore ones, I find interesting because a lot of times I'm like, fuck, he might be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's the flip side of, they just keep throwing so much shit at the wall that when a coincidence happens, they're like, fucking told you. Do you know any about Britney Spears? Like, what's going on there? Um, apparently, you only hit her the one more time. <laughs> that wasn't very funny. Uh, no, I don't know really. No. That, that's, that's another weird situation. Cause she, has she been forced to have a like contraceptive? That, so uh, she's asking, like, I want to have another kid, and she's not allowed yeah, to. Yeah, and then the whole thing is that like, she... I don't know anything about it, but the whole thing is, like... She's trying to like stop her dad basically being like in charge of her life. Yeah. And then every time they go to court and it seems to be big like open cases and stuff, they're like, no, definitely not. So it's like, maybe there is a reason that. It's great. I think, I mean, there's a lot of, I think you can say. Dad, a lot of, like, <laughs> it's my money. But yeah, there's definitely something in like that level of fame and show business where shit just gets fucking I'm 43 insane. now. <laughs> Fuck shit. Ah, oh, give him a chance to put a feet of fucking. Fucking, this is toxic. <laughs> Britney yeah. Spears, capital Brit. <laughs> I want to go to 11th. Fucking down Let me go to the bony. <laughs> Get me a bottle of Larivar. <laughs> Britney just wants to go to the bony. Like. <laughs> That's all she wants. All she's ever wanted. I'll come back in the 13th. <laughs> I'm staying at my mate's house. No, his dad said it's all right. I mean, her dad. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you still there? Christina, I go to Ireland's house. <laughs> I'm heading up with Christina Millian. Oh, right. you know where fucking Cowabunga Haggerty works in the Halster? I told you. I did. So sly, she's watching this, being like, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" Uh, not again, boys. Yeah, Britney's Britney. are like fucking free Britney back on the back on the thirteenth. What about Cosby getting out? Yeah, he's coming on to do the live stream in about oh, twenty minutes. Happy days, man. Yeah. He's bringing pudding pops. <laughs> My guest today, Patty McDonald and Bill Cosby. That'd be a good <laughs> episode. Be, yeah, uh, yeah. Cosby's out. He's probably doing some of these outdoor shows. No, he's doing Todd's Leap in two weeks. Um, that would be good. One black taxi driver and one black. Just I black, mean, just a black man. Do you think like he's? I mean, here's the thing. It's like you know, he obviously says he didn't. He's adamant he didn't do yeah. it. But like you know, I think I think there's a bit of a conspiracy theory around that. Where like, because he was so high up in show business and so connected, the fact that he was let out just like I away you go sit on. Mm. Like there should have been something, some sort of talk about that case. Yeah, but the thing was, it was so like many a, victims involved. There was like an almost like an admin error as the way he left like there was a problem with something they promised him early in the case if he cooperated with something uh, and then that was like discovered I think and it's like okay you know he probably did it but what I mean is what's stopping him 
being like, I want to go on tour now. Because as much as everyone knows the crack, yeah. due to like a, a, legal, like a technicality or something, he could, and people would go and see him. I don't know if people would still go and see Cosby. I bet you they would. See older people, like, it's like if Michael I Jackson... Suppose, yeah, they're probably like that. Say Michael yeah. Jackson didn't die and, he, put, and he, he did a tour. Fucking Aaron Butler being in front row. Yeah. People, people would still go and see him because there's that thing of like, this is my favourite celebrity and no matter what you say, it's not true. I don't believe do it. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, probably right, actually. Cosby, Cosby yeah. would... Because you know with like CK, a lot of people went to see Louis CK, but just to hear him talk about... The, the allegations the what he, yeah what he was going Cosby through. wouldn't be that'll be a shit gig because he wouldn't mention it yeah 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 that was a person with a dick in a shower and a piss and pops <laughs> how come we can't do English and Scottish accents and you can knock Cosby out of the park ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cosby what a guy what a guy um, look at <laughs> that's why they officially let him out the report Aye. said Aye. he was a skitter and Aye. a way a way on <laughs> Bill away on. Oh, you scamp you. Um, look, the outdoor. I've sort of. I only have a couple of gigs left in the outdoor tour in August. Are you Are you done for the time being, or you got some more? Uh, outdoor tour's finished up. Um, so I've just got the Ulster Halls in September. So tenth September. The other tour's sold out tenth September. Get some tickets. Yep. Um, and then I'm I'm looking into book another wee. I don't know how to do an outdoor. I don't know if we're allowed to do indoor tours now. So I'm going to try and book some some more stuff some for August. Stuff. Or outdoor. Um, yeah, because I, I was enjoying the outdoor stuff. It was fun. I think do another run of it. Yeah. You can nearly go back to the same places. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, I mean, if out, if you know outdoors definitely going to be on, that changes things. Yeah. But if it's going to be this way, and I have no problem with it being this way, just do that circuit yeah. again. Do that 100%. Again. Um, right. So, yeah, stay tuned. I'll fucking let you know. All right. Uh, next time, will you please come in and also linen trousers? I'll see what I can do. And linen um, shoes. Yeah. I was planning to wear just a full uh, gi. Yep. Yeah. You, I like no joke that. behind that I just have yeah no no I like that um, just for doing my dishes and stuff yeah yeah I like that that's one of the things I did. as soon as I got my own house as well was like you know bought karate bottoms so I can drink an espresso and the neighbours go fuck he's not even wearing a tap I like I like to think that you have so much like martial arts equipment getting delivered to the house that your neighbours are like if any if any of us ever get robbed yeah. go to Mr Bartlett's door yeah, yeah. They actually they call me the fire alarm yeah they're just always ready yeah 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 I like to have my th- a thumb put up my- <laughs> Well, from the uh, from the prank kings, cheers for listening to the episode, watching the episode, Mickey Bartlett. Thanks for having me on, Mickey Bartlett. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll leave it there. Dan, anything you've got to say or do? No. All right, you look really healthy today. Anyway, thanks very much. See you next time. Appreciate it.